So yeah, my name's Tiana Steele. I work um, at Borders College. Um, originally, my job it was as a veterinary surgeon, but uh, I now work um, as a lecturer. No nights, no weekends. There we go. So just a little introduction to start off with to the animal care industry. So there's lots and lots of different opportunities now within the animal care sector. Um, but whatever route you go down, really our prime consideration is animal welfare. Um, it's incredibly important that whatever we do, we consider our welfare first. And this is um, an ever developing, ever growing, ever expanding area with lots of research being done at the moment as well. Um, and there's been rapid growth and diversification of, of all the different opportunities. There's lots of different opportunities within animal care. So why would you choose to do animal care? Um, so mostly people tend to say they've got they've got a, a passion for animals. They really love animals. Um, and, and it's always a good idea, isn't it, to turn your passion into the profession that you want to do. You know, it's always a good idea to have a job that, that really fills you with, with energy and enthusiasm. It tends to be quite fulfilling work. You, you know, you can make a really positive impact on, on the life of animals, you know, their animal welfare and also the care is of the animals as well. Um, there's lots of opportunities so you can have a little look around and actually pick what theme um, actually interests you with lots of opportunities for growth um, and, and development of those careers. Um, job security as well. Uh, people do prioritise their pets. In a recent survey that the BBC did when they asked people, you know, what will you definitely not cut back on within the cost of living crisis? Um, people's responses were they wouldn't cut back on things for their children and they wouldn't cut back on things for their pets. So people do prioritise pets. They're willing to pay for some of these services. You have that connection with nature, which is really good um, for your mental health as well. So it's, you know, it's good to have a job that, that's that. And, and also there are global opportunities. If you work with animals, you tend to develop excellent transferable skills. And, and some of these jobs as well are highly valued in other countries and you may get the opportunity to go and work in different places. So what types of careers are we looking at? Um, so everybody tends to think of things like veterinary medicine, nursing and, and their associated roles. But there's also things like welfare and rescue grooming and styling, lots of that, boarding, sitting, walking, um, zoology and wildlife. Training and behaviour is becoming more important as more people who haven't had pets before um, are taking them on. Um, nutrition, nutrition is, is really important. People are really interested in what they actually feed their pets. Um, so there's a big sector opening up there as well. Um, laboratory animal care is a little bit more niche. Um, obviously farming and agriculture, which people are going to talk about later, and lots of um, associated other opportunities. So we'll just have a quick whiz through different things that you could be interested in. So veterinary medicine and nursing tends to be what everybody sort of thinks of first, but there's lots of other things, not just um, not just uh, medicine associated. So obviously vets are highly trained. They've been to university for a long time. Um, it's traditionally incredibly difficult to get into as well. However, there are new vet schools opening up. We have a new vet school opening in Scotland up in Aberdeen um, and they are um, working on new pathways um, and recruiting by different ways to get into these um, newer vet schools as well. So there's maybe more opportunities opening up in that direction. Um, veterinary nurses, it's a it's a, a, a similar but very different career to, to being a vet um, they they work alongside and um, they, they often nurses now provide their own clinics they do things like puppy parties weight clinics um, post um, operation appointments they've got lots of things that they do and um, often in charge of monitoring animals whilst they're in surgery under anesthesia um, and really ensuring that those animals get the proper care that they deserve and we also now have a lot of paraprofessionals surrounding our, our medicine um, veterinary professionals. So things like physios, massage therapists, acupuncturists, um, hydrotherapists. There's lots of things that work alongside um, the veterinary medicine profession. Unfortunately, we do still have a requirement for animal welfare and rescue. So rescue centres are obviously dedicated to safeguarding, um, safeguarding the well-being of, of, the, of animals and rights. So they don't only just rescue when animals are requiring it and rehabilitating, but they're also um, strong advocates for animal welfare, um, raising animal 
um, rights within society, um, influencing what laws are passed as well. So they they you know they they play a really vital role in ensuring that animals deserve and um, get the respect that they deserve within our society and, and helping to raise welfare and change our thoughts about welfare as well. And things like um, a hutch is not enough for a rabbit and actually raising um, educational awareness so that we keep our animals in, in, in a better state. And there's lots of opportunities there, both national with things like the SSPCA and also um, smaller local charities as well that work within our communities. Grooming and styling, um, big growing industry with the, with the grooming services, um, especially with the rise of the doodle. We have lots of curly coated animals which may not shed, but they do require quite a lot of coat maintenance. Um, and just the fact that, that you know, people have maybe got pets, they haven't quite realised the work involved and um, different coat types require sometimes quite specialised skills. Um, so there is a need for, for, for groomers and stylists and, and also they just make your dog smell nicer, don't they? Um, but, you know, we need to make sure that, that, that you're properly trained if you're going to be a dog groomer. So there's certification is required and people now are looking to make sure that, that their groomers have certificates and the education required. And there's great entrepreneurial opportunities. If you're good at what you do, um, you can have a really great business with grooming. And likewise, boarding, sitting and walking. Um, the massive increase in pet ownership during the pandemic, now people have maybe gone back to a more office based um, type of work, then there's a huge um, opportunity now for people to walk dogs and um, let dogs out, pet sitting to allow people to go on holiday as well. But again, the public who expect qualifications, you need to make sure that you're properly trained in order to do this and have the required certificates. And again, great business opportunities out there exist for this type of service. Zoology and wildlife conservation, um, it's again, it's a little bit more niche, can be quite difficult to get into, but there are opportunities to study um, wild animals, research opportunities out there, great for opportunities to travel abroad and use those skills that you've learned in this country to work with conservation organisations. So that there is there is work out there, um, lots of competition for it though. Training and behaviour, again, with our increase in pet ownership, especially perhaps with people who don't necessarily have a, a big experience in keeping dogs or cats for that matter as well, um, then there's a there's a, a market for training and behaviour. Um, so you know things like obedience, but could also be special tasks and lots of fun can be had out there. Training our dogs to do certain things like man trailing or agility or hoopers or fly ball, um, where you can really develop a, a bond and enjoy your dog. But again, it's really important that the people that are training um, have the certifications and, and the knowledge. So um, good to have, make sure that your trainer has qualifications and that you're trained to deliver these services. As I said before, um, there's quite a big interest in what our pets eat. Um, so not only what, what we put into our bodies, but also what our animals are, are eating. So it's really important that animals get correct from proper nutrition. Um, and that includes a balanced diet, which can be provided by buying reputable, high quality produced food. But some people like to produce their own diets at home. That can be really tricky. Um, and doing that and making sure that the diet you produce is balanced requires the, the help of a nutritionist. So nutritionists can work in industry to make sure that the, the diets that are produced are complete and suitable for the animals that they are being developed for, but also to help people um, if they're trying to develop diets at home to make sure again that their, their animals are getting the correct food that they require to thrive and survive. And again, you know, you're going to need qualifications and certification to be able to do that. Laboratory animal care, quite niche, some ethical considerations there. We need to um, make sure that the animals are, are in these situations are being cared for correctly. Um, but there are roles out there in research facilities and roles out there um, often investigating actually welfare needs and how we keep animals the best way possible. Farming and agriculture, somebody's going to cover later, but again, it's really important that our livestock is managed correctly that animal husbandry is top notch um, and that we're sustainable in this day and age. So there's lots of different educational and career pathways for these 
types of jobs. Um, so there's different paths for different careers. Um, you can come to college. We do um, full time courses and short courses to give necessary skills. Obviously, if you want to be a vet, then you need a rigorous university degree. But there are now, as I say, alternative pathways to university. And if you don't have the required grades from school for direct access, then coming to college to do um, our courses can lead you into university. Um, again, you know, whatever service you are delivering is probably going to require a certificate or a license. Um, the general public is demanding that professionals do have these qualifications. And um, so it's important that you get qualified properly. And some services are also going to require a certification from your local authority as well. And it's also important that throughout our career, we continually keep up to date. You know, things do, do not stay stable. Welfare guides change and um, best practices change. So we need to make sure that throughout our professional career that we are keeping up to date, continuing to educate ourselves and um, attending courses to make sure that we're we're right on the, the, the surface of where we should be. This slide just shows um, one of the learner pathways that we have at the moment within Borders College connecting with SRUC. Um, so we have a pathways project where we can um, direct students through our different pathways to different um, career areas. So uh, these are just the, some of the, the courses that we deliver in, in um, animal care at the moment at Borders College and how you can transfer those through. And if you come with us and do um, HNC, HND, then you can carry on um, with SRUC to convert that into a degree course. And that's a, one of a, the pathways to university, which is a little bit different. What subjects should you be thinking of taking if you want a career in animal care? Well, science and maths are always going to be helpful, but also your soft skills are really important. And um, so things with customer service, animals do tend to come with an owner. So sometimes we do hear, well, I, I, I want to work with animals because I don't like people. Well, animals do usually have an owner. So being able to manage their owners is also really important. Um, at college, we offer a schools pathway um, to come to college and stu study animal care part time as part of your choices. So in fourth year, um, fifth year and sixth year, actually, you can come and do a, um, a an animal care course with us if that interests you. So in Scotland, there, there is a growing demand um, for skilled professionals. So lots of people have acquired new pets during lockdown, lots of different services required. And um, there are various regional variations depending on whether you live near sort of Edinburgh and Glasgow, but lots and lots of opportunities. And this is just a, a story of one of our students um, who's had incredible success. So Rachel came and did her HNC HND with us at Borders College. Um, and then has gone on to set up her own business with doggy daycare and photography. Um, and she's got a, a really thriving business that, that she's got running there and she gets to walk dogs in. Well, hopefully the lovely sunshiny weather that's shown there, maybe not so great in the last couple of weeks where it's been very wet, but uh, great job um, that Rachel has there. So, um, yeah, just thank you very much for listening to my talk. I hope you follow your passion into animal care. And that's my email address. Thank you very much for that. We have just opened up our Q&A, so if anybody has any questions at all, please feel free to pop them into the Q&A section um, and then we can ask while we have Fiona here. I'll just give that a little minute, see if anybody wants to pop a wee question in. So shy. <laughs> it's been a long school day, no doubt. So Fiona, how was it exactly? So you said obviously there's so many different pathways into animal care. How was it exactly that you said you got into animal care? So I qualified as a vet from Glasgow University in 1995, which feels like a long time ago now, um, and worked mainly actually at equine practice. Um, I then moved, um, moved back to the borders, um, which is where my husband was from originally, and was just doing a little bit of um, my own business really, just a little bit of, of, of locuming work and a bit of acupuncture actually. Um, and at the time, um, the college was just setting up, actually keeping animals in college and they asked if I would come and lead that project. And um, there, yeah, that's <laughs> slightly accidental and I'm still here. <laughs>